everybody. I'd like to do a little video on the basics of using the watercolor in Adobe Fresco. And uh, this is more a watercolor painting uh, demo than it is uh, Fresco. I'm gonna try to apply my watercolor technique to uh, Fresco and see how it goes. I haven't used Fresco a lot, but I do like the brushes and uh, what's possible with them. So I wanna try it out and see how it goes. So let's see. Um, see how it goes. And here we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is set up my page here with uh, a little, just a little Apple picture I'm going to look at while I draw. And uh, I've already got myself set up with a blank layer. And I'm going to pick uh, one of the penciling sketching brushes just to do a quick little sketch that I'm going to use to, to draw the apple. I'm not going to make it too too fancy at this stage. I'm going to keep it kind of simple. Uh, because what I really want to do is get into the, the painting technique. So it isn't so important that the apple looks exactly like the reference image as much as I have something to, to paint over, right? Now, I don't like to overly render my pencil drawings when working in watercolor because pencil marks show through in watercolor. Watercolor is semi-transparent. But I do like to sketch. I do like to draw. So I do like seeing pencil lines in my work. So that to me is an important feature. I like that in my art. In other words, I like seeing the pencil marks. So I'm just going to erase those. Those little lines there. And good. So I've kind of got my pencil, my pencil drawing set up. Now I'm going to set this up so that this, this layer is going to blend over the painting layer. So I'm going to click on the settings. I'm going to set my blending mode to multiply. Okay. And I'm going to click on the layer options here and underneath that pencil layer, I'm going to create my first painting layer. All right. I'm going to collapse those out of the way. Now, uh, when working in watercolor, you have to be careful to control where you put the paint. Um, one benefit of working in fresco, I've learned, is that you can erase watercolor, which good luck doing that on paper. So I'm going to start by working on the apple itself. I'm going to try to pick kind of a lighter reddish color that I can use for some of the base coat of uh, the... Uh, the apple itself. And I'm gonna do a couple strokes here to see if I got the right size. That's not quite there. Let's pick the size. Let's beef that up a little bigger. See about that. Yeah. And so if I was painting this on paper, what I would be doing, right, is I would have a very, very wet brush. And so I'd put down, and this would be like a big, thick, moppy brush, and it would be kind of wet, right? A lot of water coming down on the paper. And what you do is you end up taking your brush and returning to a previous stroke and kind of adding a little more water into it and getting it to spill over somewhere else. I've noticed as I work in fresco that depending on how hard I press is how dark water comes down so it's reactive like that which is nice and because it remains wet um, it means that the blending effect sticks around it doesn't it doesn't stop so you're not working against the clock you know when you're working in paper it can get away from you because the, the paint dries and so you can end up with a real blotchy painting also, I'm kind of tempted to paint too much and I don't want to, right? If I paint too much, it becomes really oversaturated and mottled and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to start with just my base colors 
and I'm going to switch to a smaller brush actually this time the detail brush for the little stem. See how it bleeds in there? It's kind of hard to see, but see how it's bleeding? <laughs> That's so interesting how that works. Don't know how those wizards at Adobe made this happen, but I'm impressed. Okay. All right, now let's do a green. Let's, I don't wanna go with a really ugly bright green. I wanna keep it kind of soft and muted. So, oh, I wanna change brushes. I wanna go with that softer, bigger brush. Let's try it. Look at that go. That is something else. Um, now I've noticed a couple spots where it's spread past my, um, my drawing. And so it's leaked onto the page a little bit. You know, that would be a real problem if I was painting on paper, but watch, I could take my little eraser and I can fix that. Isn't that insane? I'm going to go with a softer edge. I can, I can, <laughs> I could restore that. That's crazy to me. So I'm just going to fix a couple of these little spots that kind of got away from me on my painting. Good. And, you know, I do like some of that anyway. So I do like it when it spills a little bit because that means it's a watercolor. So I'm not going to fix all of that. Okay. It looks like I need a little bit more down on the base. I, I kind of want to re redo that line. So I'm going to go back with my brush. Probably go with the detail this time. I'm going to go for that reddish color. Good deal. And See, painting under that pencil line, it it creates that shadowy edge that I want because it's blending with the pencil lines I already drew. That's making the darkness the way I want to see it. Good. All right. Awesome. Okay. Now, I think... Um, I could do some shading probably next, add a little of that detail texture in there. So I think I'm actually going to dry this layer and uh, make it so that I can paint over it and I won't disturb the painting that's already on the page. So I'm gonna click on the little ellipses button down here on the sidebar and at the very bottom it says dry layer. Boom, it's dry. And now what I can try is see what happens if I Darken that red color just a little bit, maybe a little bit cooler red. I'm gonna go for a little bit wider brush. Let's try the flat, see what happens. If it gets away from me, I'll just undo it. Magic. Okay, so what did that do? That covered the red underneath. Didn't quite do what I wanted. So I'm gonna undo that and try something else. I'm gonna try creating another layer. Okay, and then this time I'm gonna try painting over it with that gray color. Okay, now let's see what happens if I change the settings of that uh, overlay layer from normal to multiply, let's see what happens. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, now that brush stroke is a little too big for me, so I'm gonna undo it. But I do wanna make sure that that layer is now multiplied. So. This is kind of like putting an additional wash over my page. I'm gonna shrink down my brush a little bit so the size is a little better. And then I'm gonna try being a little more, oh wow, I got that brush really small. What did I do? I was not trying to make it 80. I'm trying to get it in the, like the 200 range. There, that's better. Okay, so now I'm gonna, there we go. Trying to pay attention to the light source in the photo. Increase the size a little bit. Push a little lighter. 
try to make it a little more gradiated. Is that a word? Gradiented, <laughs> gradated. Yeah, that's a little more like it. Okay, now there's a little bit of um, richness in the color here. So I'm gonna try, you know, oranging it up just a little bit. Maybe not quite as dark and see what happens if I paint over a part of the apple there. I'm trying to keep this bright spot in the middle because that's where I'm imagining the uh, highlight is. So I'm trying to bring that down a little bit. And here I'm touching very lightly right now. I'm not touching very dark, I'm not pressing very hard at all. Okay, yeah, so that secondary color, notice how when I turn that on and off, you can kind of see how enhanced that is because of that multiplied layer. Now, that would happen if I let my painting dry for a while and I came back with a darker color over the top. You know, that's naturally what watercolor does. But uh, I'm mimicking that by using a separate layer and then drying it. While I'm working, I could do the little leaf here. So I'll do that, pick up that green, make it a little darker, uh, go back to the paintbrush, make it a little bit smaller so I have a little more control. And let's try adding in the stem here. Let's paint in there, let's see what we can do with this little, this little puppy here. Yeah. Perfect. Digging it. Yeah. Mm hmm. I see what's happening here. Okay, got that little brown. I am going to have to go with the really tapered brush, get in there and do a little darker. Yeah, give it a little shading and shadow that it needs. Awesome. Okay. Okay, good. Now, um, there are different techniques you can use for this. Some people are purists and they won't apply any other um, medium to their watercolors. Personally, I like to draw into my watercolors. Like if I had a colored pencil or something, I could add some detail lines. That's just me. Others might wanna be just purely working watercolor. So what I'm gonna do here is try to work on a background. So I'm gonna dry that layer and I'm gonna make a new, uh, a new layer and I'm gonna position that layer underneath all the others. And this is gonna become my background. Now in the reference photo I'm looking at, it's a very, very soft off white. So I want to mimic that color very carefully to come up with a very soft color. And I'm gonna go with like their big flat wash brush Make it pretty large. It seems on the scale for this painting, like 400 is pretty good. So I'm gonna see what happens if I just kind of just kind of brush. I'm gonna darken that a little bit, to kind of do the shadow. Maybe not quite intense enough. Make it a little bit smaller. And I like this because it's kind of bleeding into the background color I painted. All right. That's good. Now notice how this is really fascinating to me. The red color that was painted on the previous layer is opaque over the painting layer underneath. That's just one of those interesting little features here. So to get around that, 
I would actually go back to that layer and I would erase. Again, that's totally not possible in painting, but I could erase that little bit back in there and, and put it back over it. Now I mentioned earlier about doing kind of a, a little bit of a painting style. Now it is possible here if I want to create a layer above everything. And let's say I switched to a different brush entirely. Um, let's see what happens if I do like uh, oil. I don't know what's gonna happen here, guys. I'm a little bit frightened. Let's see, I'm gonna do white. And let's see what happens if I paint a little highlight in here. Plop. A little too thick. Make that brush a little smaller. Yeah, let's try that again. You know, if you were doing this on paint, you could come back with a little opaque titanium white here. Uh, I'm going to smudge a little bit and see what happens, I can kind of smudge that a little bit. Just give that little hint of a highlight on there. Um, I could go back in with my pencil and sketch back in over the top, which I kind of like doing sometimes. So let's say I go with a dark color and I kind of enhance the edge of that apple a little bit. Or I could even pick one of the colors, like that reddish color to kind of enhance it, make kind of a darker red. Kind of working upside down. That gives a little detail along the edges. I'll go back to that white color. Few more pencil lines on the yeah so there you have it guys little uh, apple painting in watercolor on Adobe Fresco not bad I'm digging this little program pretty cool. All right, you guys, hope you like that. Try it out yourselves. Get fresco, get painting. See you next time.